Hello everybody, it is Friday the 6th of November and it would appear, let's not tempt fate, that the technology is working today and we are broadcasting live to Facebook, which makes a change for Zoom. So technology's working, the sun is shining, it's a cool crisp autumn day and having been hyper focused on the US election all week, having stayed up all night on Tuesday for no result, which we still haven't got, it's looking very positive, Steph. So I'm, I'm in a very good mood. And how are you? Yeah, good. Did my lovely walk in the woods, which is always a great way to start the day. And that's what we've been focusing on this week, haven't we? About filling up your tank is one of the big themes. Exactly. So we're doing another recap and rewind week to kind of embed a lot of the stuff that we've done over the past few months, a lot of the topics that we've covered. And what's been really, really striking for me is just how intertwined these topics are and how you do one thing and it will impact on something else. So, for example, if you get enough sleep, it will massively impact on your rejection sensitive dysphoria and your emotional regulation, you know, be so much easier to control. You start exercising and that impacts on your RSD and your ability to stop and your relationships with friends, with family, with your significant other, if you have one and how everything is built on one another. So it's not just a case of, I'll well, try this. And it might seem a bit overwhelming to kind of put everything in one basket, but it really is a case of doing a little bit of each thing that will help and you'll find that with inches doing little things on each subject you'll come a really really long way you won't realize it because it'll be so so subtle so um yes as matt has just said georgia on my mind <laughs> so i'm exactly the same being completely hyper focused and that's another subject i'm difficult to tear yourself away however i found it easier in hyper focus this week because i have been exercising and doing all the meditation and the mindfulness, even though I'm hyper-focused to be able to stop and do the things that I need to do, which is also interesting. So it's not just emotional regulation, it's regulation of my attention, which has been impacted positively by all the stuff that we've been doing. So I don't know if you, if you found this, Steph, with some of the work that you've been doing and some of your coaches. Yeah, I mean, it's always a case of insight in mind with these things, which is why we've drawn up that kind of daily checklist that draws upon the main points from all the topics we've done. Um, and we've, we've kind of done in a form that it's not a checklist per se in terms of you need to be ticking off all these things. We don't want to create pressure with everything. As always with us ADHD is we need structure, right? We need a plan, but if it's a little bit too rigid, if there's too much pressure, then it's kind of like counter, completely counterproductive. So it's kind of striking that right balance. But with this checklist that we've done can just be used as like a visual, visual prompt um, for remembering kind of those things that uh, are going to help keep you tank full, keep you moving in the right direction for the day, put you in the right mindset. So yeah, I mean, go, going over all these things that, that we need to keep in mind, it needs to be in sight for us to be able to keep in mind and, and act upon it. Yeah, and, and you're so right. And it was it's that reframing, because when I was trying to do all these things beforehand, by framing them as a chore and something I had to do, my mind was kind of resisting. And then if I wasn't able to tick them off or, uh, you know, alongside everything else, I felt like a failure because we hadn't, you know, embraced failure then. I couldn't face being a failure. So I didn't want to look at it. So you just kind of completely kind of go, I'm not looking at it, not doing it go away, I failed, rip it up, off you go. However, since I started reframing my habits, such as going for my daily walk, doing my yoga and my exercise, etc., as something really positive and, and, and actually a treat and my me time, rather than having it as a chore, it's just become so much easier. And also that embracing failure, right? didn't think it was as important as it was because I was thinking, oh, embracing failure, that's not going to be as important as habits, is it? Or relationships or rejection sensitive dysphoria. But actually, that's been really key because we are going to fail. We are going to fall off the habit wagon. You are going to have a couple of days where you're not going to do your exercise or you're going to miss a night's sleep because you stayed up for the US election and you're going to feel a bit rubbish <laughs> the rest of the week. Um, so just accepting that 
it's been key when I didn't think it would be. So this is how important it is to kind of, you know, look at everything holistically, isn't it? Yeah, and that's the thing with ADHD, right? There's so much to it. So it makes sense that in terms of managing it, there's so much to it too. <laughs> Yeah, but I think one of the biggest things for me for all of the subjects, so for habits, for embracing failure, you know, for the affirmations going right back, all of the stuff we've done, friendships, RSD, anxiety, it is all about tiny little steps. Because as ADHDers, more often than not, and I've been really guilty of this and I've seen it with other people, we're all or nothing. We want to be brilliant at it. We want to have it completely nailed. Otherwise, we want to throw it out completely. So we want to be like, I'm going to do an hour's exercise or it's not worth it. Or I'm going to have this habit completely nailed and do it every day and it's automated within a week or I'm not going to bother. But actually embracing the fact that this is going to be a slow process, which we don't find easy and we are impatient. We have to inch our way along before you know it. A few month, in a few months time, you look back and you go, what a difference. And we're not very good at that, are we? No, but, that, but that, and I think that's another good thing about our community, right, is that we've got lots of witnesses, but I was just having a look at some of the our members in the chat and what they've been, I mean, it's great, like, you know, one of our members is going for a walk after this, you know, another's been kind of meditating and being able to reframe exercise, for instance, which she said was transformative. It's just fantastic. It's really having these things that we talk about that we revisit because each topic is kind of interlinked just keeps it keeps really makes it easier to implement in our lives to practice and just having that encouragement um and also role models literally everyone's kind of being a role model for each other in the group but the community um aspect is, is is huge it is huge and um as virginia's just said in the chat you know when you don't get dressed till midday that's absolutely fine we are going to have days like that we have to expect them and <laughs> What one of um so one of our members in the smash it this week turned up in his PJs, but he smashed it. You know, he he smashed it, right? It's great. Turn up in your PJs. Like, I mean, how cool is that? I know the number of times that I've just put a top on and made it look as if I'm not in my pajama bottoms doing these live doing we these our secrets, Michelle. Live lunches. <laughs> and you'll think, you know, we've we've been out for our our long run. No, sometimes I am in my pajama bottoms, and you know it's it's just accepting that accepting your ADHD is like the overall umbrella here. We are going to fail. We are going to find this difficult. This is the point. This is why we're here. This is why we're helping each other as a community yeah. because we do have these challenges together and helping each other along with them and forgiving, learning to forgive yourself and seeing other people fall off the wagon and get back on. This is what it's, it's just absolutely massive. And this is where you notice when you've missed a night's sleep, your emotional dysregulation, because I think it's been months since I cried on one of these and I'm about to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> for the right reasons, right? I just absolutely for the right yeah, reasons. Said here, the changes in my life have purely been brought about by the community I found in the inspiration and encouragement flair, which is just thank you know, awesome. Like, and I, now you are going to make Michelle cry now, Claire. That's all on you. <laughs> I'm not crying. I have something in my eye. <laughs> yeah. uh... So, but it is, it, it's wonderful. And just revisiting a, a lot of the stuff that we've done over the last few months, which is all available on the members portal, all of the resources, recordings, you can listen to them as podcasts if you like, just to remind yourself of, of how far we, how far we've come. And it's not a course. You can just pick it up whenever and pick up some of the subjects if you're struggling with something in particular. But it's, um, yeah, a journey, but we can't expect it all at once. But then when you look back, you see how far you've climbed and that's quite astonishing and seeing how far some of you guys have climbed as well in the last few months. And I am gonna, I am gonna. <laughs> it's it's just it is absolutely inspirational you're all brilliant and you're resilient because it's bloody hard having adult adhd isn't it yeah, um it is, and just it? supporting one another has been great yeah word that's what matt said word i think that means he agrees <laughs> yeah absolutely. now we're very lucky and again gratitude being one of those things that we talk about a lot in the community too um, because what you focus on, right, grows, you know, that's where all the energy goes is what you focus on. So mindset 
is huge for us ADHDers. Um, and in order to have the right mindset, it is about all those like essential uh, ingredients like the sleep and the exercise, the community, filling up your tank, having that self-compassion, um, being able to embrace failure. So the growth mindset and yeah, not easy things, but for us, they are uh, they're foundational. They're, they're prerequisites, I would say, to really thriving with ADHD. So we do a lot of a lot of work around having that that right mindset um, that's going to serve us because you know we tend to be perfectionists so it's more about what was it yeah well perfection paralyzes progress so, so we want to aim for progress not perfection and progress doesn't mean in terms of achievement um, it can just progress for, for for instance for me I think I've made the most progress through this community by actually kind of promoting my self-care and going for, you know, I wasn't kind of going for walks in the woods. I wasn't carving out that time before. Um, I'm, you know, doing the yoga. The, the downward dog's been awesome, Michelle. Thank you for that, uh, that tip. I even signed up to Tai Chi. You know, I wouldn't have done those things before. So, and that to me is, is real progress. Just giving myself a bit of a break and, and looking after my, my health and mental health. So, yeah. Because so much of that success that we, you look at in a lot of the self-help books that aren't focused on ADHD are to do with getting tasks done mm. and success and achieving and hitting your goals. And because we feel so bad about procrastinating our tasks and being disorganized and our executive dysfunction, we forget that the other stuff is more important and that the tasks will follow once you've done the self-care and you've got your emotional regulation and you're less tired and your attentional regulation is a bit better. And just the joy that you feel from, from daily life, from doing all that self-care stuff, just being instead of being a, a human, being instead of a human doing, um, as Brit says, is, is massive and not putting that pressure on yourself to be that person that you, you thought you should be when you were, you know, 18 and you've never quite hit it's just accepting who you are right now and what you have around you being grateful for that and accepting that is is just massive because I used to put so much pressure on myself to you know I can't I've, you know I've never achieved my goals or I've never lived up to my potential once I let go of that that was it it's it all changed from there yeah, which is not easy for us ADHDers. It's really not easy for us to be able to just be in the moment, even though we're very much, you know, the now versus not now. And we, some of us have trouble thinking about kind of the future. Um, it's really hard for us just to be present. And actually, you know, that in, in itself, right, when we can be that, when we can be more in that state, I mean, that is, that's success, right? To just be present, just be present, guys. Because really, uh, particularly with the pandemic, right, it's, yeah. That's what we've got really isn't it really like and it takes work to get to that point and, and I got quite emotional the other day it was windy and I was I just watched a leaf come off a tree and come down and I just thought that's beautiful and I wasn't thinking oh you haven't done this you haven't done that or this is a worry as I normally would you know and that's that's the difference it's just that being in the moment, accepting who you are, accepting that, you know, you're always going to have stuff you haven't done. So what? That's the thing. That's the thing, right? I know you, you put your to-do list, you know, you go through it and if, sure, it feels good when you get all those things ticked off, but you know, next day, you know, next day, day after that, day after that, day after that, day after that, that, you know, it's going to be that to-do list. If that's kind of what you're purely focused on that drives you, and particularly for an ADHD because of that lack of like novelty and it's a bit it just well it doesn't really do anything for us does it doesn't it's not inspiring it's not motivating at all so yeah they're definitely the neurotypical based it doesn't doesn't work for us we have to do things our way and it's it's very much when a good question actually came up in coaching the other day with a client um because she was working out whether to do a business plan or a pitch deck first right I know it still sounds a bit mm, but um, she felt more motivated to do the pitch deck. Now, you know, in a neurotypical manner, it probably should be the business plan. You do the business plan first, you know, you map it all out, you do your, you know, all your research, etc. But for us ADHD is right. Yeah, you know, like that ain't gonna happen. Then we wonder why we procrastinate on everything, on these things, because we feel compelled that we should be doing it the way that it should be done. Um, but the thing is, based on that, 
it never gets done. So you just got to just abandon that. You got to abandon that and just trust yourself and do it your way. And a good question to ask is where, you know, what, what's going to kind of bring you joy? Um, and for her and for most of us, it's that the visuals, you know, and the creativity, the, and the pitch deck, you know, she started with, with that. And from there, you know, and then she's going to go back and kind of fill out the business plan. She's got the motivation and also a lot of good information to, to fill that out from that point, but she's been moving. She's got momentum. Yeah. Um, yeah, so absolutely. It's and as Mark's just said in the chat, it's like carrying a big weight around all the time, you know, those undone tasks, but that can make you strong. Admittedly, it does. We have got great resilience as a skill, most of us with ADHD. But then if you get the right meds and the right coping strategies, you end up being pretty capable. And then you don't realize. And then you look back and you go, actually, I've done all of this. And it's been it was suddenly let much less effort than it has been for years. Mm. Just be, be careful, guys, of setting the bar even higher once you get medicated. That's, you know, because we, again, we're not very good at looking back and measuring our progress because we're, we're in the now. It's like, oh, but, but this is where I want to get to. And so all we're doing is looking at that outcome. And sure, outcomes are important. But if that's the only thing you're kind of looking at in the next, you're never kind of celebrating what you've achieved. You're never looking back and saying, well, hang on, you know, and giving yourself a pat on the back and then celebrating and being in that moment. So we can't always just be looking ahead of us at the outcome because you don't be living your life like that and never actually truly being present. So going back to Ferris Bueller quote, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around every once in a while, you could miss it. Please guys stop and look around at how far you've come and what you have achieved and not what you haven't and just be really grateful and give yourselves a massive self hug and a pat on the back um, for how far you, you really have come. Cause I'm, I'm so proud to see some of the progress that you've all done and um, really honored and privileged to be a part of that. So thank you. Thank you all. And um, next week, Steph, what are we doing? Looking forward. Yeah, so um, we are going to be doing parenting next week. So um, I recently did a webinar on parenting with ADHD. So not just parenting children with ADHD, but parenting when you've got ADHD yourself, because that ain't easy, tough gig. Um, and so, and I think that recording, we've got that the recording off in the members portal now, I believe, Mish, I think. Um, the original webinar, I'm not sure. About oh, was, yeah, the Q&A, the Q&A that I did yesterday, we're going to get that up as well. It will be on the portal. Yes, but we will be revisiting. Um, we'll be probably go back to the webinar and um, but more Q&A as well during the week. Um, because when you've got when you've got kids with ADHD, right, you're not only managing perhaps your own ADHD, but your children's as well. And we know that executive function can be a challenge. And yeah, so when you've going to have to hold and execute for other little people with ADHD it can become very very challenging so we need all the support you know they say it takes an army to raise a kid with ADHD I think yeah well in terms of the parent trying to raise that kid they also need um or a battalion maybe I don't know but they definitely need the ADHD unlocked community guys um so what we're going to do next week we're going to be talking about the challenges, but more importantly, try and work out some ways to make it all a bit more manageable. So for, for those that aren't members of ADHD Unlocked yet and are parents, and particularly given we're in lockdown, guys, thank God our kids are still at school, but I'm sure you're going to be working really hard, then the kids come home, and then, yeah, we all know um, how much energy we have in the tank by then, and not a lot. So do, do come and join us. Um, also, I'm looking to do uh, another webinar on the SEND legal framework. So um, talking about uh, ADHD at school and how your child um, is entitled to, to support at school and maybe even covering some fun EHCP stuff. So yeah, do, do join the membership and uh, we'll help you on that front as best we can. Brilliant, so it's adhdunlocked.co.uk um, is the website and once you do join you get access to the members portal with all of the resources behind it but in the meantime if you haven't already joined do join the group ADHD Unlocked Community on Facebook the main group and um, that's open to everybody we have a special Facebook group for, for members only with more support in there but also sign up for our mailing list on our website because we've got some resources we're going to be we're sending out to people on the mailing list so it's just daily checklists all of this kind of thing that to really really help you so sign 
sign up to the mailing list, join our membership community, adhdunlocked.co.uk, and make sure that you like our Facebook page and join our Facebook group. Um, so, because we've got lots of stuff that we do and send out on a daily basis, but, um, and it's a wonderful community and we're very, very proud and honoured to be a part of it. So have a great weekend. It looks like Biden is going to get confirmed later on today. So I'm very excited. Sorry to any Trump fans. I don't think there will be any in our membership community, but you never know. Um, so whatever your politics, have a great weekend and make sure that you fill your tanks. And thank you all so much. And it's lovely to see you again. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye bye.